to the to the split this Bitcoin cash Bitcoin split yep so when I first got excited about Bitcoin you could send and receive any amount of Bitcoin with anyone anywhere in the world and it was free most of the time the times it wasn't free you'd pay a fraction of a penny and that led Bitcoin from being you know worth almost nothing to this worldwide phenomenon that it is today but much more recently within the last year or two a bunch of people that don't have any background in economics or, or, or in business seem to think that people will use Bitcoin solely as a store of value, even if it costs tens or hundreds or thousands of dollars to send Bitcoin from one person to another. And so they've intentionally undermined Bitcoin's usefulness in commerce. So Bitcoin on August 1st split into two versions of Bitcoin. There's now Bitcoin SegWit and Bitcoin Cash. The Bitcoin Cash version of, of Bitcoin still has fees of less than a penny. You can send and receive them with anyone anywhere in the world just like that. Bitcoin SegWit, now the average fee is about $10. Uh, I did a Bitcoin transaction on the way here. Uh, in fact, I was send, sending my Bitcoin SegWit Bitcoins to a Bitcoin exchange to buy more Bitcoin Cash Bitcoins. The fee for me <laughs> to don't... send those Bitcoins from my computer to the Bitcoin exchange was $100. And so if you ask yourself, you have two versions of Bitcoin. One is slow, expensive, and unreliable, mm -hmm. Bitcoin SegWit. And you have another version of Bitcoin that's super fast, reliable, and cheap. It's not a tough decision. And that's Bitcoin Cash. It's not a tough decision as to which one people are going to start using in commerce. But these Right. So I might, I might be a little confused here. So when I'm telling you that I have two and a half Bitcoin, I, I, when you say Bitcoin SegWit, that's the original, the original, so to speak, right? Well, so that's debatable right. as well. Um, okay. So it, depending on when you received those two and a half Bitcoins, it was probably from a bunch of people yeah. over time. However many you, Bitcoins you had on August 1st of this year, you now have that many Bitcoin Cash as well. So let's say you had two Bitcoins exactly on August 1st, you mm -hmm. now have two Bitcoins and two Bitcoin Cash. Um, although I believe you said that you were holding your Bitcoins on Coinbase. I did. And as we were talking about bef before the show, yeah. Coinbase is a fantastic company, but it's not a Bitcoin wallet. It's a Bitcoin bank. And they're holding the Bitcoins on your behalf, and now they're holding the Bitcoin Cash on your behalf. And so you're going to have to wait for them to get around to giving you access to their Bitcoin Cash, which I think they will. But if you were using a Bitcoin wallet in which you're holding the Bitcoins yourself on your own device, you would have access to your Bitcoin Cash right there from day one. So what do you mean I don't have access to it? If I was to right now log in and I got to do all that stuff on my phone and all the password craziness and all that, I'm very happy that you have to do all those things, obviously. What do you mean I don't have access to it? You only have access to the Bitcoin SegWit version of Bitcoin uh -huh. on Coinbase today. They've promised to give everybody access to their Bitcoin Cash at some point, and hopefully they'll do that sooner rather than later. But August 1st was a couple of months ago now, and they still haven't gotten around to doing it. And I'm confident that they will, yeah. um, but it's nice to have access to your money now and not have to wait around for somebody else to do it. And that's why it's very important, and I always tell people, use a Bitcoin wallet not a Bitcoin bank. So why wouldn't everyone want Bitcoin Cash, though? Unless I'm missing some... I think everyone is going to want Bitcoin Cash. The so, thing, but, so then what, the but what's the logic? Yeah, what's the, the piece that I'm missing The reason everyone's not using it yeah. yet is that this Bitcoin segment version of Bitcoin managed to bring along all of the existing infrastructure in Bitcoin that's been around for, you know, nine years now, eight years now. Bitcoin Cash has only been around a couple of months since August 1st. And the fact that Bitcoin Cash is now supported on the Bitcoin.com wallet, it's supported in the blockchain.info wallet, uh, Coinbase has publicly said they're going to support it, uh, it's supported in the BitPay wallet, it's getting more and more support from wallets and merchant processors and exchanges. Uh, I think it's a matter of time when people are faced between a fast, cheap, and reliable version of Bitcoin and a super slow and expensive and unreliable version of Bitcoin. Right. There's but no what's doubt the argument mind. from the slow people? The people that, that don't agree with you on this, what, what's the actual argument? If we're really just talking about slow speeds and sure. you know, a clunkier process, obviously that doesn't sound good. So to have fast, cheap, reliable transactions on Bitcoin, it requires a more expensive computer to run a full node. But the vast, vast, vast majority of Bitcoin users aren't running a full node anyhow. You've probably never run a full node in your entire life. And nobody, you know, none of these Coinbase users are running a full node. Coinbase runs a number of full nodes to support your Bitcoin transactions. So if you have the Bitcoin Cash version will require bigger blocks, which will require a more powerful CPU and more storage space. So right now, today, you can run a Bitcoin full node for the Bitcoin SegWit version literally on a $25 Raspberry Pi. These people are Wait, limiting. Is a, what is that? A, uh, a Raspberry Pi is, 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 is a $25 computer. Yeah, okay. And that's the name of the computer. Oh, there's, a, there's, a com yeah, there's, there's a an actual computer yeah, we called We run this thing on Pi. Pies now. But wait, there's a computer called the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, it's called Pi, like the, the number. Uh, ah, got so. it. 
You see, there's a lot there of terms here. Next day. thing you know, we're running this thing on, on uh, cakes. Okay. So you can run the Bitcoin Segwit version of Bitcoin on a $25 computer. Bitcoin Cash today can still run on a $25 computer. But in the future, as Bitcoin Cash becomes more popular, maybe it'll take a $100 computer or even a $500 or even a $1,000 or a couple thousand dollar computer at some, at some point. But that's okay. Most people aren't running full nodes anyhow. And if, you're, if you co it costs $5 or $10 or $100 to use Bitcoin, Segwit, and it costs a penny to use Bitcoin Cash, it's clear. So you're, you've been accepting donations on your website. I think you got most of those donations before the price of Bitcoin transactions skyrocketed. And the reason yeah. the price of Bitcoin Segwit transactions skyrocketed is there's one megabyte worth of transactions that can happen each 10 minute period that can hold about 2,000 Bitcoin transactions. In the early days, maybe 10 people were using Bitcoin every 10 minutes. Uh -huh. So you could do it for free and your transaction will be included. Now that Bitcoin is this worldwide phenomenon, more than 2,000 people are trying to use Bitcoin every 10 minutes but you want your transaction to be included in the blockchain. So if more than 2,000 people are trying to use it every 10 minutes, they have to bid against each other. And the top bidders are the ones that are included in the next block on the blockchain. So now the fees are about $10 per, per transaction because anybody that pays $9 has been outbid by the people that are paying $10. So Bitcoin Cash's solution to that is, well, just make the blocks bigger than one megabyte. It's 2017 of eight terabyte hard drive is about a hundred bucks at the moment and they're only gonna get cheaper year after year. Yeah, so your um, feeling basically is that the technology will always sort of, the computing power that we need for this will always sort of stay in front of the problems. Right. So just because it keeps getting faster and there's faster. There's this great thing called Moore's Law, which is exactly that, that computing power doubles uh, about every 18 months. And so if an eight terabyte hard drive today is $100, in a year and a half from now, it's gonna be about $50. And a year and a half after that, you know, $25, and before you know it, they're garbage in the landfill, and people laugh at an eight terabyte hard drive the same way we'd laugh at an eight megabyte hard drive today. But I remember eight megabyte hard drives, and I remember when they were several hundred dollars. And I'm not that old of a guy, and yeah. the same is gonna continue to happen with uh, computers before we know it. You mentioned Nintendo before. I remember when the first, I think it was four megabyte game came out on Sega Genesis. It was a big deal. And, I remember, and they were going, people were going completely bananas about it. That is yeah. many lifetimes ago. Uh, just real quick, let's circle back to this to this wallet versus bank thing because I think uh, maybe maybe I could be a little clearer on what you're saying. So Coinbase as a bank is really just holding my Bitcoin. If they were, if I had this in a wallet, then that's actually part of the actual blockchain. Right. You're, if you have it in a Bitcoin wallet, you're interfacing directly with the actual Bitcoin network. Whereas when you use a Bitcoin bank like Coinbase, you're interfacing with Coinbase and you're saying, please broadcast my transaction to the Bitcoin network. And most of the time they do. But like your Bitcoin Cash at the moment, you don't have access to it. And I would actually recommend that on your website, you should put a Bitcoin Cash address up there. Because right now, if people want to tip you in Bitcoin, it's going to cost them 5 or $10 in network fees. So if they wanted to give you a dollar mm -hmm. in Bitcoin, they're going to have to pay 6 so, or $11 to do that. And I don't think too many people are going to do that. These what don't if, seem like the type of people that would make sense to. <laughs> whereas if they wanted to tip you in Bitcoin Cash if a dollar, they'll have to send a dollar and a penny. And that's very tolerable to people. And I'm more than happy after we record, I can show you yeah, yeah. Bitcoin cash wallet. I'm going to say, I've got my own farm out there, servers, and we're going we're okay. to fiddle around and see what we come up with. So then why would someone use a bank then? I think they just didn't understand the difference, yeah. just like yourself. Uh, I think you didn't realize the difference between Coinbase and a real Bitcoin wallet yeah. up until now. Fascinating. All right. Well, I think we did a pretty decent job there. Of <laughs>